Hello and welcome to the Futurum Tech webcast in collaboration with Model 9. I'm joined by Eddie Chiliendo. Eddie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Stephen. So, I'm really looking forward to this one. Performance. I can see you smiling. Lots of people ask the question. We spent some time talking about Model 9 and the company. Now we want to drill down. You're going to have to help me here. Connecting a mainframe to a public cloud, how is that faster? than connecting a mainframe to on-prem storage, often in the same data center, maybe even next to the mainframe. You're going to have to explain that one for me. Uh, and you're right. I'm, I'm smiling because I think we get this question every every time, right? And people oftentimes are you know, just completely in utter disbelief that we could even be close uh, to the same speed as on-prem infrastructure that is usually, as you know, is connected via fiber optic uh, cables. Mm -hmm. right, so I think there's there's two main reasons why Model 9 is just as fast, or actually faster, than this on-prem infrastructure. The first reason is in physics. Right? Uh, so, so two things. You're going to take me back to school, are you? <laughs> I, I might, actually. <laughs> so uh, one of the important things is, first of all, to understand, you know, are we talking about latency or are we talking about throughput? Right. Latency, absolutely. As you, as you go over the network, and regardless if we're talking cloud or even in your in your data center, right? As soon as you go in, uh, over the network, you will in, in, incur latency. That is usually, you know, in starts somewhere around a millisecond, goes up to whatever, 10, 20 milliseconds. And that's just the simple pieces of light have got to go down a, ca you know, it's light down a cable. Absolutely. You can't avoid that. Absolutely. But if you look at our use cases, right, whether it's uh, creating third data copies, backing data up, uh, mainframe uh, data up to cloud or object storage, or moving bulk data for, for AI and machine learning purposes, you're not that much concerned about uh, uh, you know, how fast your first transaction gets there, as you would be in an OLTP workload. Right? You're concerned about throughput. And now we get to the second part of physics uh, in, in you know, this short physics lesson here, is as we, as we you know, care about throughput, well, there's a reason why everybody outside the mainframe world has been embracing network-defined architectures, because the network has gone so fast. You know, we're talking 100 gig Ethernet uh, infrastructures, whereas you know, FICON is still stuck with 25 gig. Mm -hmm. So the pipe, even though you know the bits are moving slightly slower, the pipe is so big that from a throughput perspective, we can achieve huge throughput just going through that Ethernet pipe. So that's kind of the physics aspect of uh, how we can achieve our, our performance levels. So let's just unpack that from a latency point of view. You're not in the transaction, given the use cases that you've got. It's third copies. It's been able to move data off to the cloud. So you're not needing that sort of in-transaction latency piece. And then because you're moving bit large amounts of data to the cloud, it's not about the speed of the pipe, it's the size of the pipe. Is that a simple way of thinking about no, it? No, no, you're, you're spot on, right? So, you know, kind of simplify, you know, we're breaking it down. If you have a million IOPS, DB2, OLTP, core banking, infrastructure, whatever, you want to do this FICON attached to, you know, one of the large uh, mainframe storage vendors. That's nothing that we're going to replace, at least just yet. <laughs> right. that's, is there something you want to tell me about future roadmaps? <laughs> but no, I mean, I think that's really interesting to, because I think people will hear this, they'll hear about Model 9 and they'll think, oh, I can throw away all of my mainframe storage, I can move everything to the cloud. And that's, we're a bit more nuanced than that, I think. Absolutely. It's for those transactional, you're still going to need FICON attached. Absolutely. But for most everything else, you're going to be able to do that with object storage. Is that the right way of thinking no, no, you're, about it? No, you're spot on, you're spot on. Right. And again, in those other use cases that we just discussed, right, and whether it's cyber resiliency, third data copies, whether it's moving data efficiently to the cloud, whether it's backing up data to an object storage that is on-prem but is network attached, you know, for all of these use cases, we're talking terabytes, petabytes of data that we need to move efficiently. Again, so the size of the pipe becomes much more important than the actual latency of that pipe. And that's how you're com competing or probably coexisting is probably a better phrase with that FICON. Is that the right way of thinking about Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. Eddie, anything else we should be thinking about as we think about performance and Model 9? Yeah, I mean, again, so, so as I said, the first topic was physics, right? So people have to understand, you know, we're not talking about latency, we're talking about throughput. And mm -hmm. looking at the physics, 
uh, of, of Ethernet uh, these days, what kind of offerings are available, right? The pipes are getting so big, so fast, so efficient, whether that is in your data center or going out to uh, some of the major public cloud providers, right? So that's the kind of the first piece of the equation. Now, the other thing uh, that I think is just as important is uh, rooted in the architecture of Model 9, right? A lot of our competing products look at the storage media, whether it is tape or virtual tape, in a very serial fashion, right? Even if you have a virtual tape server with a bunch of flash drives in there, uh, you know, you still access that device in a serial fashion because you're still thinking in terms of tape or even virtual tape, right? And since we're such a new company uh, in the market, we did not have to deal with any of the technolo technological depth. Right. We were able to start from a clean slate and think about, okay, so how can we make things more efficient? And what we're doing is we're reading data from, from the mainframe, from DASD, from DISC, from tapes, in, in, in a parallel fashion, ingested data. We, you know, we use all the bells and whistles of the modern Z platform. We uh, leverage the zip engines. Uh, the more th zip engines you throw at Model 9, the faster we work. The more OSA cards you throw at Model 9, the faster we work. The more crypto engines you throw at Model 9, the faster we work. You get the idea. And is that, that being able to parallelize the deployment is where you get that speed? Absolutely. Right. So it's again, it's parallel ingestion. Uh, leveraging again, you know the, the, the huge I/O capabilities of the mainframe, right? We've always been talking. It's a beast. For exactly. IO. Yeah. It always has. Been. Absolutely right. So we're leveraging that capability. So we read massive amounts of data, into a model line agent ingest that uh, again in a very parallel fashion. We again use all those co-processors, co and then as we move data out, again we're not we're not having you know a single stream out to the cloud, out to object storage. Uh, per default, we write in 10 streams, you know, we chunk the data up, we write in 10 streams of 5 megabyte. You can obviously uh, configure that depending on your object storage target, but you see, I mean, there's a, there's a huge level of parallelism. And then the target also makes a big difference, right? I mean, the public cloud providers, the hyperscalers, they can absorb massive amounts of data being sent to them. And the same is true with a lot of the on-premise object storage platforms. Right, they're all flash systems these days that are extremely fast. They can absorb or write out again tons of data. Right, so we're much faster both in moving data to object storage again for backup purposes, but then also much faster in getting data back from object storage for restore purposes. It's always great to get that architectural view and get the physics view. But what are customers saying? You've now got some pretty big deployments. You've moved large volumes of data, I'd imagine, for those clients. What has the customer experience been? It's oftentimes shock. Yeah, I can imagine. I know I'm probably the proxy for that. I think just trying to understand that, and you've made a lot of sense there, but what, what are they seeing? What are the, have you got any data points or any sort of customer examples? Yeah, absolutely. Share? So I think two, two examples I would like to share. One is in the backup restore space. And again, when I was saying shock, I literally meant shock. They thought that uh, you know our product wouldn't work because their backup jobs would complete so quickly. So they thought something must be wrong. But uh, now the backup job ran properly, you know, and I think they went down from a, you know f full volume backup of one of their large infrastructures that was taking them almost 23 hours uh, down to less than an hour. That's pretty significant. Yeah, and obviously, you know, that's probably on, on the higher end, but. I would say on average people see their backup restore windows shrink by somewhere around 80%. Uh, and I mean, y you know the, the um, impact of that, right? Your, your backups are completed uh, sooner. That means your whole batch cycle can now also start or complete uh, a whole lot sooner. And backups, a key part of that overnight batch and being able to shrink that down so dramatically is going to have an impact. Yeah. So Eddie, if you were to summarize a performance from a Model 9 perspective, what would be that key takeaway? Uh, parallelism, 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 right? Think about that. Uh, understand that uh, we're in the game of throughput and not latency. And again, you know, a new architecture like Model 9 can do away with a lot of the, you know, the legacy that uh, has been built into some of the other products over the decades. So we can do things uh, you know, really cloud native and, and a whole lot more efficient. Fantastic overview, Eddie. Where can customers find out more? Uh, so the first stop should always be our website, model9.io, uh, where we have a uh, learning portal for prospective customers. They can go in there, see demos, 
Uh, we have white papers around performance where we go into more detail if customers are interested. And they also have the capability then to set up either a custom briefing or a custom demo uh, where we go into more detail. Fantastic. You've been listening to the Future in Tech webcast brought to you in collaboration with Model 9. My name's Stephen Dickens. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.